Cybersecurity already has its place on the agenda when the world discusses the future of business, but now that conversation has to include the new, changed world of artificial intelligence. AI is now deployed by cybersecurity teams and cyber criminals alike, and Exabeam, a cybersecurity company integrating AI, is on the front line of that very modern confrontation. I sat down with Steve Wilson, Exabeam's Chief Product Officer, to talk about the new revolution engulfing the safety of our precious data. Steve, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's get straight down to what it is you do. Exabeam is in cybersecurity. You are particularly in the business of getting artificial intelligence into the uh, cybersecurity space. Is that right? So um, there's really two ways to think about AI in cybersecurity. One is what we do, which is we aid companies defending their networks using cybersecurity. The other is what's becoming more and more popular, especially with the rise of some of these new technologies like chat GPT and, and things like that over the last couple of years is more and more the bad guys are using artificial intelligence to try and attack and defraud companies. And this goes everywhere from automating their attacks on companies to creating things like deep fake videos to try and trick people into doing things. So it's, it's really gotten much more complicated and there's something of an arms race in AI going on between the bad guys and the good guys. So what sets you apart? What, are, what, what, are the, what is the difference between a regular cybersecurity company and, and Exabeam at work? So I think there's a there's a couple of things. And if, if you look at it in the broadest sense, some of our competitors in this space are mega corporations that are household names. Um, Microsoft, Google, Cisco have products in this space, but they're not specialists in cybersecurity. Um, we specialize in just this type of cybersecurity. So we're a large company with over 3,000 um, high-end customers who trust us with their security, but we're not spending our time building word processors and network switches. And so this really gives us the focus to address this kind of problem. From a technological point of view, the fact that we have 10 years of deep experience building machine learning technologies, we have um, hundreds of petabytes of data that we can analyze for our customers and help them build defenses. And so we've layered on multiple generations of this AI and machine learning technology to basically help them to do everything from speeding what we call threat detection all the way through automating response to a security incident. I want to talk a bit more about this arms race that you mentioned before. So end users and corporations are well aware that quite often individuals are tempted to literally click on the link to allow in the malware. That's the kind of the standard breakdown of your portal into your network, isn't it? It's a mistaken invitation or a fake invitation to do something. The people who are becoming more advanced in terms of the AI uh, cyber attacks, are they, for example, are those the same people who've modified their, their moves? And also what's different about the way they approach that? It's funny, it was not long ago that the training on spotting a you know so-called phishing email was that it would be written in poor English, it would have obvious flaws in it. Uh, today, that's not true. Um, even a, a hacker group from a third world country has access to AI that will rewrite these things in perfect English or perfect German or perfect Japanese. Um, they look exactly like the emails that you might be getting from a company that you're doing business with. And beyond that, we've seen examples where this has escalated to um, live interactive video calls where people are impersonating other employees at your company with AI masks and voice changers. So that's how fast this is moving. So ultimately, the defenses against phishing have improved radically over the last year, but the bar for these attacks has gone up dramatically. So is it, am I actually allowed to envisage a world where a colleague of mine might appear on a, a Zoom call and ask me for my bank account details? This is not science fiction at all anymore. There was a well-publicized case where uh, 
<clears throat> an employee at a bank got a call from uh, his finance controller that told him to transfer millions of dollars to a certain account. He went ahead and did it, and they decided later that that was a fraudulent so-called deep fake. Um, we had an incident in our own company where someone tried to get a job at our company for a remote position. And when our security team looked at it because they flagged something anomalous about the discussion, they decided that the person was was wearing an AI driven deep fake. So it's getting to be commonplace. That's extraordinary because what you're relying on then is the policy that really drives all of AI, which is patterns of predictable and expected behavior being broken in some way or other. Absolutely. And I think that's that's really the key is that from a defender's point of view, AI is really good at analyzing patterns and spotting anomalies. And that allows you to go from, say, the, the billions of events that might be going inside your corporation each day. Um, uh, Andrew logged in from here. Andrew touched this file. Andrew did this. How do you determine if that's a normal day for Andrew? Well, there might be several factors. You logged in from a place you don't normally logged in. He's on holiday. <laughs> from a device you're on holiday i might be pulling in data from your calendar from hr and when i compare all of that all of a sudden it raises a big red flag that says somebody needs to go look at this and do it right now and there's no way to do that without this kind of artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies at your back so where do you think we're heading in all this? Obviously, AI is going to get more advanced and AI cyber security is going to get more advanced as well. Will that merge eventually, do you think, with the kind of what I'd like to call analog methods of cybersecurity, which is a simple kind of password discipline and the other things that traditionally we associate with cybersecurity? Is that all going to become one large kind of expertise module going into the future, do you think? I think absolutely. I think AI is being integrated into... Um, the very fabric of doing cybersecurity. So it's become accepted now that people need AI to do cybersecurity. And I think the place that we're, we're going to is really what we call a future of AI agents. And this is going to be um, basically AIs that are on your network helping your security operations team secure your network proactively looking for different types of threats, automatically doing the first level investigations that today your humans have to do to verify if something's a real problem, and ultimately leading to the point where they can close the loop and decide there's an action where, hey, here's a threat, I should disable this account, I should close this port on my firewall. So we're going towards a future where this is going to become more and more autonomous and more and more automated. And that's really the only way to operate at the same speed that the bad guys are gonna be operating at. Briefly, my response to that is, what if uh, the computer or the AI machine is wrong and shuts you out of your computer when you're very busy and wanna get on with your emails? I think this is a condition that's always been a challenge for cybersecurity. We call this the dreaded false positive problem. And um, when you're doing manual analysis on this. Um, this is a, a problem today where employees will sometimes find out that um, the security team is being too cautious. One of the big advantages of bringing in the machine learning is you can get rid of some of that human bias and bring the more objective data to it. So the, the model that we have today is what we call a co-pilot model where it's the computer software and the human engineer working hand in hand, I think we're gonna go on a transition over the next few years where we can watch that and we can watch the percentage that the machine is right on its own without the human supervision and decide when we're willing to trust it to take certain actions without the human in the loop. So what's next for Exabeam? That path that you're describing to us now? So we're going down a path. We introduced what we call our Exabeam Copilot in 2024, which really is that idea that you have a chat GPT-like partner built into the product that allows a security analyst to have discussions in English or Japanese or French um, with a cybersecurity assistant that has access to your cybersecurity data. 
And the feedback has been that speeds up your analysts by two or three times, which is a, a huge benefit. Um, in 2025, we are going down the path of driving this to be more and more automated with the goal of being able to do this first level of investigation end to end in a purely automated way. And that that's really what we're calling this initiative around AI agents. And I think that's the future of cybersecurity defense. Steve, pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks for having me. The future of companies like Exabeam is an ongoing story and cybersecurity will be a reality for us all as long as we continue to run economies on this planet. It's an uncertain world which few of us truly understand, but without the research and continued persistence and innovation of operations like Exabeam, well, this whole game would quite quickly and suddenly be over. <laughs>